What's up, everybody? Thanks for watching the video. Uh, we're going to sit here and we're going to ask Haley a bunch of questions, and she's just going to answer as many as she can in a like a 10-minute span. So, Haley, get ready. Some of these are off the wall. We're reading them straight off Facebook. So, let's go. Wes, what do you got? Yeah. Well, these are all pulled from the Underground Interviews Facebook page, where we asked the fans what they wanted to ask Haley. So it's kind of an AMA here for Haley. Uh, let's see. Tyler Finney, since the Stalker is my favorite disc, my question is what was your determining factor to make it your tour series disc? It's been in my bag ever since I started throwing disc crash, so it was an easy decision. Gotcha. Um, okay, so Kyle George, do, you met him at some point. How did you dis develop such a good backhand from when he first met you four years ago? Um, well, first, I want to give a shout out to Kyle. He's like my best friend ever. Um, oh, he nice. Me a lot. Uh, but I just did field work and I recorded myself to see what I was doing wrong because I'm like, I look at things. I look at things different from most people. Like I like to break it down so I can easily change what I'm doing. I can see what I'm doing wrong and then change it. So if you know, like, or I know, I just knew what would work best. I kind of guessed on my form and it worked, but then I like looked at all the pros and it was the exact same thing they did. So just worked out, recorded myself. Yeah, I think there's a lot of power for people looking to improve their form in recording because a lot of times what you're actually doing is not what you think you're doing. So just having somebody video or recording yourself in a field throwing, um, you know, all different power level shots can really, I think, open up your eyes on what your form actually is and things you can improve. Um, Robin White, would you consider doing co-ed tourneys for the pro tour? And if so, who would be your ideal partner? Mixed, like a mixed doubles kind of tournament, it sounds like. Yeah, I mean, I think that'd be fun. I did mixed doubles at Worlds with Brian Earhart, so I mean, I love the guy choosing for my partner, like every, you know, disc golf, every disc golf tournament I need, and he needs to be my partner, it's going to be that guy. <laughs> so, Earhart. Kind of going off of that, it, would you consider playing any open tournaments? I know Paige mentioned it. Are you thinking about maybe playing some open tournaments next year just to see what see what that's like? I think I don't know if I'd do it next year for any A tiers or national tours or pro tours, whatever. I wouldn't do it at that level. But I think sometime in the future I'm definitely gonna be doing it. It's just mm -hmm. gonna help elevate my game playing with a different like playing with the men, it's gonna change your game a little bit for sure. That's yeah, awesome. Something like B, B tier or C tier or something. Yeah. Nice. That's cool. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, next up we got Ryan Kilborn, and he would like to know, who did you you model your putt after, and did you have any putting influences? Um, I didn't model my putt after anyone. I just, <laughs> I, in 2017, I putted three hours every night, and I figured out what works best for me, and that's what worked best. I don't see any top pros really putting with my style. <laughs> yeah. I think you have a very unique style. If you were just a black silhouette on a screen, I think a lot of people would probably be able to recognize it because it is so unique. And I think putting uh, is one of those parts of the game, kind of unlike, you know, driving and forehand shots where it can really be unique to everybody. And depending on what putter you use and what you're comfortable with, your body type, I think putting changes quite a lot between person to person. Hmm. Yeah. So Jeff Cowan asked who would be on your perfect card three folks that you want to spend an entire round at round with and just kind of adding on to that what course would you want to play with those three folks um madison walker <laughs> katrina allen and kristen tatar wait kristen and the course, hmm, probably just, I don't know, any any course, I don't know. Any course? Any I course. love them, so playing on any card with them is just fun. Awesome. <laughs> Perfect. I see, Alex, you stuck me with this uh, this tricky name. I'm going to try my best. 
Cool uh, juice. There we go. Cool juice. Uh, what was your very first favorite disc, and do you still use that same disc? My very first favorite disc was a C line FD3. <laughs> Way um, back. Yeah. Um, I forgot the second half of the question. No, you're good. <laughs> uh, obviously, you probably wouldn't still be using that just because okay. it's an FD3. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so Andrew P. Mills, this one is, this one's good. The second part of it, I really like it. So the first one is, have you figured out what putter you're using for 2020? And then also Woody asks, bark, bark, question mark? <laughs> That's his dog. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I, I don't, I didn't know. Uh, well, I've still been practicing with both my CT challengers and Luna's. But all the rounds that I've been playing, I've been using my Lunas. So right now it looks like I'm going more towards the Luna, but still a couple months yet to figure out what I'm doing. Gotcha. Uh, Jamie Martinez, which event on your 2020 schedule are you most looking forward to? Um, Ledgestone. <laughs> <laughs> Love <Okay>. for Ledgestone. <laughs> So how has your uh, – Chris Crosby wants to know, how has your grant game grown since playing AM championships in the Quad Cities? Uh, it changed a lot. Back then, I was, having a, I was having more body problems, like my back body was hurting, so I couldn't throw a disc a certain way. But I think my putt is still similar, but my backhand is different, like completely, and <laughs> – I actually lost my forehand compared to then. So I think when I played, when I was like an amateur, my forehand was way better than it has been now, like as a pro. Mm -hmm. uh, next one comes from our pal Sarah Gilpin. And you might have even read this one. Fruit smiles or mops? Fruit smiles. <laughs> <laughs> she asks if uh, Madison ever came to a solid conclusion. If you and Madison ever came to a solid conclusion. She still thinks mods. I still think fruit smileys. I mean, my twin oh. agrees fruit smileys. So. <laughs> Verdict's still out. So Cody Mark Slonim said, if you could collaborate on Discraft, collaborate with Discraft on any disc, what disc would it be like? Fairway driver, putter, mid range driver, and and what would it be like flight wise? I would like to see, or yeah, I would like to see a mid range that can handle the torque of a sidearm. Like I think the Buzz OS is great, but I think it's, I think it's like a little too dumpy sometimes. Hmm. But yeah, like I'd like a Buzz OS that's not as dumpy but still stable. Gotcha. Hmm. Stable mid-range. I take it. Um, my pal Jack Dickman, how did you get into disc golf, and what made you want to continue competing? Maybe we'll just go with the second half. What do you love about competing in disc golf? Uh, I'm I'm a competitor at heart. I've been playing sports ever since I was little, so just the competitiveness is fun, and disc golf, I love being in nature, and I love just exploring things. I never had the opportunity when I was younger, so just being able to disc golf around the United States is just mind-blowing to me that I can just see whatever I want. Yeah. That's so cool. So playing off that a little bit, uh, going down the list, one of the questions from Mike Salas is, what other sports did you play growing up? Uh, my sister and I played softball, and I did soccer. We were in, like, uh, Seventh grade, I think we did volleyball too. So, nice. yeah, we were in quite a few sports. Not all of them were with the school, but yeah. Hmm. I've heard that from some of our other junior players on the underground team too. Just playing lots of different sports really helps you with disc sports. There's so many different attributes and muscles with throwing a frisbee that you can take little bits of all sorts of different sports and uh, bring it over to disc golf and have some good success. Um, where are we at? 
Scott Fenner, who is your favorite FPO player to play with? You listed a couple before. If you have to choose just one, play with forever. Madison Walker. <laughs> She's a goof. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Richard Roberts and... Oh, what was the other one? Richard Roberts and somebody else. I didn't catch it. Uh, I think Chad Sullivan asked similar questions. Uh, Richard wants to know what advice would you give to a young what young girl getting into the sport? And then Chad is curious how many other girls you've gotten into the sport already. Um, I'm not quite sure on how many girls I've gotten into the sport. I just go do whatever, get as many people in the sport as I can. But I think for a young female joining the sport, it's going to be rough for the female side of the sport. Like it or it is. So I think if you just keep your mind to it and you practice and you really put your time into the game, that you'll be able to be a touring player. You'll be able to be on the top of the FPO. That you just need to know that it's going to be hard for a little bit, but you'll be able to get through it if you keep practicing. Nice. Uh, Brian Wolf, favorite plastic blend of all time? Uh, the ZSP. Ah. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. I like like the, cloud, the, the cloudy Z kind of stuff? Yeah, cloudy Z, yeah. Nice. So Josh Hayes wants to know what putter hardness do you prefer, hard or soft? And then do you have a – does it change depending on – weather or something like that um well a lot of people know that i put with ct challengers so very stiff and slick putters i it doesn't really change like if there's any weather i mean i have a whale sack if it rains got towels and if it's cold i just heat up my hand a little bit so that doesn't really affect my putters during the gotcha. seasons do you think kind of going between the sort of slicker ct and the you know, still very firm, but a little bit more grippy Lunas. If it rains, you might switch between one or the other? Or I Yeah, I think that definitely might be a possibility because I think no matter what next year, no matter what putter I decide with, I think I'll still have, like, a challenger. If I decide to put with Lunas, I'll still have a challenger made. Or if I put with challengers, I'll still have, like, a Luna for longer putts. So. Yeah, nice. Um, Eric Bolton, who has been your biggest inspiration in the sport? Uh, Barrett White, for sure. And then I'd say Brian Earhart is another person that helps me and inspires me. I like that guy. Yeah. <laughs> so I think this is kind of a, a, a foregone con conclusion, but Chris Heisel is curious. If you ever smile. If I ever smile. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the time while playing disc golf rounds, like, I get distracted pretty easily. So I'm listening to music and, like, I just want to stay in the zone so I can keep playing my way and just stay focused on what's ahead of me. So I don't really let emotions get to me when I'm on the course. So you don't really see me smiling or frowning or anything, really. So yeah. what do you listen to on the course? Uh, I listen to like a lot of Juice World, country music. I, I listen to a lot of music. So. Okay, so just a wide range. Any anything that really comes on the shuffle. Yeah. Okay. I think on that point, it's so interesting just how different pros operate on the course. And having been to some of these bigger tournaments, uh, these courses are hard. Like the pros, a lot of times, you know, are shooting 14, 15 down, 18 down, making these courses look easy, but. Uh, for people that are not in the 1%, like these courses are really hard and you really have to focus on every single shot. And, you know, some people are able to like just really tap into that focus when they step on the tee box or when they step up to their shot, you know, maybe like Simon, he's kind of joking around between shots a little bit. Um, and then there's other people, you know, that really need to stay focused kind of throughout the whole round. And so I think that's been one of the Inter interesting things for me going to some of these big tournaments and just you know seeing the different ways that people operate and, and different things that work for um, different people. Do you ever find yourself 
uh, like s- just extra zoned in or you get so focused that you kind of like lose the whole you're playing disc golf with other people? Well, not really because <laughs> the only time I'm really like focused is when I'm on a tee or throwing an upshot, like when I actually have a disc in my hand. Like I'll be focused, you know, going up to that. But as soon as I throw my shot, it's like, now what, you know? So I just go fiddle around or something, and I talk to, you know, the card mates. But I feel like I don't allow myself to get too focused because sometimes being too focused can hurt you. So I think, like, I found a place where that I can be this, like, just the perfect amount of focus, and I'll be good to keep going, you know? That's awesome. That's awesome. Super interesting. Um, my pal Bryce Duncan, what disc is your favorite that isn't in your bag? Um, hmm. Anything that's like Vulture. Vulture? Yeah. Yeah, I love that disc, and it's not in my bag right now. I'm not sure why, but yeah. Throwing it, throwing an Onyx. Yep, Onyx. Yeah. Love that disc. That's uh, it flies so well. Uh, so Will. Go Ringer. Is it Go Ringer? Is that how you Go Ringer? Okay. So Will Go Ringer has a question about your dream disc and plastic combination. Either if it exists or doesn't exist. Um, this disc right here. This is like the best disc ever made. It's uh first from Zeus. I think Brian Earhart gave me this. It has a lot of Z in it, like you can see it's pretty secret. Yeah. Um this is I, this is some really good feeling plastic, and I love the Zeus. It's a great disc. So, is it a max weight? Uh, I think one sixty, one sixty two, or one seventy, one seventy two. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So it's heavier. Yeah. Nice. Huh. That, thing, that thing is sweet. Hold it up again. Nice purple and green. If Haley ever loses it. You guys saw it here. She needs it back. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um. At least we did. This is our last question for the night. Uh, what kind of practice or drills had the largest payoff for your game this season? This season, uh, I was able to drive a lot, like do some field work. So I think that paid off a lot. Yeah, nice. gotcha. it helped. Yeah, helped a lot. I know we've seen you a bunch on Instagram, putting down some crazy hallways and in some tight spaces. Uh, do you do you like practicing kind of in those? little tighter spaces like does it help you kind of focus or dial it in yeah so I love putting that's like my (laughs) favorite part of the game I think I think there's no really perfect way to putt so I like to practice putts either like different ways like push putt spin putt whatever and I think there's a lot of there's a lot of chances that you can hit the basket just slightly wrong and it's going to pop up back at you so like my whole thing with putting is that i need to find that perfect like perfect throw that's going to have a chance to stick on it the most so i like i like to throw a longer putts and you know just to see what the best angle what the best speed is from that distance see what's going to stick the best nice so so cool dialing in even speed on your your distance that's something i haven't heard from a lot of people before so Super interesting. Yeah. That's all of our questions. That's all of our questions. We went through all of them. Uh, Be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Make sure you guys subscribe. I am more than certain we'll have Haley back on a couple times this year, doing some check-ins, talk to her about some big tournaments along the tour trail. And at the end of the day, Haley. Wait, 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 wait. You have a disc to give away. Oh, you're right. (laughs) If you made it this long, kudos to you. Hope you found this very interesting. We have a Big Z Comet to give away. Is that a double double stamp? Yeah. Wow. It's a double stamp. It's not even misprint stamp. It's just a cool, cool Comet that I found around the factory. Um, So, yeah, we're going to give that away. Comment on this video on the YouTubes. Make sure you're subscribed. Good call, Alex. (laughs) And And now... What do you got to do? Make that.